hello students in this section we are going to study about nuclear fission and fusion all these reactions like nuclear fission and fusion it is related to binding energy so last class we discussed what is meant by binding energy and we studied the equation also binding uh, be is equal to delta m into c square now see uh, before talking about this let me uh, tell about some properties of neutrons how are neutrons formed who discovered neutrons james chadwick so he discovered neutrons by colliding beryllium with alpha particle okay beryllium with alpha particle so uh, i can write the equation like this alpha particle is equivalent to helium nucleus so when he bombard the beryllium with the alpha particle then what happens is carbon is produced along with that neutrons are also produced neutron is represented like n uh, charge is 0 and mass num mass is 1 n 0 1 that is how we write neutrons this neutron is having many properties first of all you know neutron is actually having no charge so it is not deflected by electric and magnetic fields we cannot deflect neutrons with electric and magnetic field that is the first property so please note down now neutron is present in all the elements except hydrogen only hydrogen doesn't have uh, only hydrogen doesn't have uh, neutrons all rest all the elements have neutrons in their nucleus now the third point the neutron's mass is slightly greater than the mass of proton we discussed that already and the next thing since the neutron is neutral they are having very less ionizing power so neutrons cannot ionize the gas when the neutron pass through it okay ionizing power is very less and uh, as a result this neutrons can introduce radioactivity in many elements that means if i take a stable element and hit with neutrons then it can induce radioactivity in that element a free neutron the last point and that is the important thing a free neutron is unstable it will decay it will spontaneously decay into proton electron and anti neutrino so i will write like this this is the free neutron it is unstable and that free neutron will decay into three parts three particles the first one is proton i will write like this this is for proton and the next thing is electron electron is represented like this e negative 1 and 0 plus the third particle is anti neutrino Uh, we write it as nu bar and along with that some energy will also be uh, produced and that energy is called disintegration energy because nucleus uh, neutron is decaying so the energy q is mentioned as disintegration energy so a free neutron is unstable it decays into proton electron and anti neutrino and the half life of neutron is around 1000 seconds so that's all about neutron the properties of neutron now let us come back to the binding energy so we already talked about binding energy and now i am going to say binding energy per nucleon binding energy per nucleon so binding energy per nucleon means it is the binding energy divided by the mass number so i will write like this delta e suffix b subscript 
delta E subscript B n binding energy per nucleon. So, that is the total binding energy divided by A capital letter A m is mass of 1 nucleon. So, capital A is the mass number. So, B e by A is binding energy of 1 nucleon. So, I will be writing like this z m p plus A minus z m n minus m into c square divided by A. So, this is all about binding energy about uh, binding energy per nucleon. Why I am saying this? If the binding energy per nucleon is more, that nucleus is more stable. And if the binding energy of nucleon is less, then that nucleus is less stable. Okay, then that nucleus is less stable. So, stability of the nucleus depending on the binding energy per nucleon, that is the significance. Now, there is one graph which shows the binding energy per nucleon with the mass number uh, that is excluded from our syllabus, but I am just showing the graph only then I can explain nuclear fission and nuclear fusion. So, binding energy per nucleon that graph and explanation all those things are deleted from the syllabus, but only uh, with that I can explain nuclear fission and fusion. So, I am just showing that figure. So, here in this graph you are seeing like this the number which I write and the x axis that is the mass number and this is binding energy per nucleon. You do not have to study this graph it is not there in our syllabus, but just see the binding energy is ranging from 0 to uh, sorry the mass number is ranging from 0 to 240. And, uh, the average binding energy per nucleon is ranging from 1 to 9. You can see that for lighter nucleus like protium, deuterium, tritium, all those the nucleus, for the lighter nucleus, the binding energy per nucleon is very less. Okay? Binding energy per nucleon is very less. And as you move towards this side, you can see certain peaks for helium, carbon, oxygen, you can see certain peaks in that peaks the binding energy will be more. So, the binding energy per nucleon of helium carbon 12 and oxygen 16 is more than the neighboring electron neighboring nucleus. So, those three nucleus are more stable than their neighboring nucleus because their binding energy per nucleon is more. Now, you just see after that mass number 30, you can see the graph slowly goes up and it reaches maximum. The maximum binding energy is for iron, which is having a mass number of 56. The maximum binding energy is for iron. And after that, it just slowly decreasing. And when you go to uranium, the binding energy is almost around 7.65 this one is 8.75 mega electron volt, 8.8 8 mega electron volt and for uranium it is about 7.65 mega electron volt. So, you can see the binding energy slowly decreases and here for heavy nucleus binding energy per nucleon is less. So, this is here I have marked one thing it is the region of maximum stability that means the range which is from here to here this range is having maximum stability or we will say like this around 30 to 120 mass number ranging from 30 to 120 we can consider uh, it is stable. This region is most stable, but I am saying the mass number ranges from 30 to 120 the nucleus will be stable and after that the nucleus will be unstable. So, think about this more the binding energy per nucleon more stability it achieve and lesser the binding energy per nucleon lesser stability it has. So, think about the smaller nucleus like hydrogen, protium, deuterium, tritium all those things are having lesser binding energy per nucleon. So, they are light nucleus. So, 
when we give sufficient amount of energy heat energy these nucleons will combine together to form a, a higher uh, level nucleus that means if i take two hydrogen and give sufficient amount of energy the hydrogen will join together to form helium so helium is more stable than hydrogen and again if i give high energy to helium then the helium will combine to form carbon understood helium will come so helium comes here binding energy he4 is very much greater so that is there now helium will combine together to form carbon which is even more stable carbon can combine to form oxygen which is highly stable so these are the reactions which happens in stars the primary reaction which happens in stars is hydrogen when it gives sufficient amount of energy when we give sufficient amount of energy to hydrogen around 10 raised to 7 kelvin then hydrogen will start fusing together to form helium and that is called nuclear fusion which is the energy source of all the stars and during the death stage of the star helium fusion and carbon fusion can takes place so what is meant by nuclear fusion the nucleus having lower binding energy per nucleon is less stable and when we give enough energy they will fuse together to form a higher nucleus which is having more stability that is called nuclear fusion so during nuclear fusion large amount of energy is liberated that is what we see in sun now think about nuclear fission when we go to the higher nucleus that means example uranium its binding energy per nucleon is lesser than this stable nucleus that means 30 to 120 binding energy ranges from 30 to 120 so what will happen uranium will split to form two lighter nucleus which is having mass number almost in this range within the 120 range so that they are becoming more stable so splitting up of a nucleus splitting up of a heavy nucleus into two lighter nucleus is called nuclear fission so we can split uranium when we bombard uranium with neutrons when we bombard uranium with neutrons uh, uranium can be split into um, barium and krypton those are the two nuclear uh, new, new nucleus forms barium and krypton along with that large amount of energy is liberated that is called nuclear fission so during nuclear fission we have to bombard uranium with neutrons okay those neutrons we use are called thermal neutrons and they are slow moving neutrons okay thermal neutrons are slow moving neutrons only then they can induce uh, radioactivity in uh, uranium they can induce or they can start and continue nuclear uh, fission whenever we tell about nuclear fission there is something called chain reaction so i'll just show a picture of chain reaction see this is the picture of a uh, chain reaction one uranium i am bombarding uranium with neutron when the uranium is bombarded with neutron what will happen when a uranium is bombarded with neutron uranium splits into barium and krypton i have shown it in different colors just see it so barium and krypton will be formed and along with that three neutrons will be liberated three neutrons so in one reaction when one reaction takes place three neutrons will be liber liberated out of that just imagine one neutron is absorbed but so as a result i have shown the remaining two neutrons so in each one i have shown two neutrons each now these neutrons will go and hit new uranium 
So, I am not talking about the loss now, just imagine the actual case, the ideal case. When one uranium uh, is hit with a neutron, uranium will split up into barium and krypton. As a result, what will happen? Three neutrons will be liberated. These three neutrons will go and hit another three barium, uh, another three uranium nucleus. Okay, so, each uranium nucleus will again split into barium and krypton and each one will liberate three neutrons. So, now what is the number of neutrons? Nine. That will go and hit nine uranium atoms. So, nine uranium atoms. So, what will happen? Each one will again give uh, three, three neutrons. So, total 27 neutrons. Like that, the procedure keeps on increasing, the process keeps on increasing. So, such kind of chain reaction is called uncontrolled chain reaction and uncontrolled chain reaction will lead to atom bomb. So, that is the principle. For the atom bomb, the principle is uncontrolled chain reaction. But what we do is, we will do controlled chain reaction. We will control the chain reaction by absorbing some of the neutrons. The absorption of neutrons uh, can be done with the help of control rods. Okay, we use cadmium rods, cadmium rods or boron steel ro uh, to absorb the uh, neutrons. So, we can absorb the number of neutrons formed thereby controlling the chain reaction. That controlled chain reaction is used for atomic power energy atomic energy. We can use nuclear uh, fission and using nuclear fission heat energy will be liberated. That heat energy is used to boil the water, uh, produce steam. The steam will turn the turbine which runs the generator and produce electricity. That is what is happening in nuclear power plant. So, there what we are using? Controlled chain reaction. So, chain reaction is controlled with the help of uh, cadmium rods control rods. We use cadmium rods for the control rods. Okay. Now, for a chain reaction to occur, the size of the fissionable material must be above certain size called critical size. If the size of the material is lesser than the critical size, then the neutrons are lost. I already told you know, uh, when three neutrons are created, the three neutrons will go and hit three uranium that is actually the ideal case, but actually that will not happen when the neutrons travel they will be lost they will collide with the walls or they will collide with the another uh, uranium which is not fissionable and as a result it will be lost. So, the size of the uh, material we should require a minimum size so that the loss of neutrons should not be much. That is called the critical size. If the size is equal to the critical size, then the number of neutrons produced is equal to the number of neutrons lost. At that time, the chain reaction can be controlled. And if the size is greater than the critical size, the reproduction of the neutrons is greater than 1 and the chain reaction can occur. And if we are not absorbing the neutrons, then the chain reaction will be uncontrolled, it will lead to explosion. Okay. Yes. Now, nuclear fusion, we have already discussed splitting of like uh, combining or fusion of lighter nucleus into heavier nucleus. So, here I have just shown some reactions. Uh, you do not have to study those reactions, but uh, it is just for your understanding I am saying hydrogen is fusing together to form deuterium and again that is fusing together to form helium 3, then both of them are fusing together to form helium 4, that is what is happening in the star. So, in the star usually proton proton cycle takes place. In very bigger star carbon nitrogen cycle also can take place. Uh, you do not have to study any of this equation, only just study what is nuclear fusion. And for the nuclear fusion to take place, very high temperature is required. So, uh, we call this as thermonuclear fusion, thermonuclear fusion. 
then nuclear fission whenever nuclear fission takes place harmful gamma radiations are taking place. So, that can cause cancer that can cause death. So, we have to enclose the entire reactor nuclear reactor in uh, using concrete which is about 2 meter thick ok 2 meter thick and when we dispose the nuclear waste we have to enclose the nuclear waste in a lead container and then expo uh, uh, dispose it Oth otherwise the harmful gamma radiations will come out which will cause uh, mutation which will cause cancer and even death. But such kind of harmful radiations are not there in nuclear f uh, fusion. But we have not achieved a technique to control the nuclear fusion that is why still now we cannot use nuclear fusion for energy uh, uh, for the power generation purpose. But uh, we are trying to make one and uh, it will come uh, I hope like within 10 years they will achieve it. So, that is all about the nuclear chapter. So, with this our chapter comes to an end. The remaining topics which is there in the textbook is already deleted from our topics. So, with this the chapter comes to an end. Thank you.